How's it going folks? Zach from Uchu Shelf here. It is nearing the end of November and I've only just realized upon waking up that I have not done an October manga haul video. Now I realize that there are dozens out there wondering what I purchased this month and uh, you know what? I'm gonna cater to you guys because you are the people who are keeping this channel alive. So without further ado, let us jump into it. <laughs> Now, fair warning, most of this stuff is stuff that I did buy at MCM London, so if you're more interested in seeing how that went, there is a description to that video down below or up there. Or up there. I don't remember which side it comes on, sorry. So first up, volumes three through seven of Fire Punch. I now have all but one of Fire Punch, and I'm going to buy that. The next chance I get, Fire Punch is, of course, a harrowing dark tale from the creator of Shonen Jump's Chainsaw Man, Tatsuki Fujimoto, that follows a man who is perpetually on fire that punches the shit out of his enemies. And if you've read Chainsaw Man, you know that he has a certain je ne sais quoi about his composition and his panels, his storytelling, definitely his art as well. It's definitely something that stands out from a lot of other mangaka, especially in Weekly Shonen Jump. So if you haven't checked out Fire Punch, definitely do yourself a favor, light yourself on fire, and go punch the shit out of people. Next up, we have the first volume of the manga adaptation of Mitsuisen's Bake Monogatari. Now, this manga is upside down for some reason. Now, this manga is drawn by O Great. O Great is, of course, known for manga such as Air Gear and Tenjo Tenge, which, if you haven't checked either of those out, do yourself a favor and go do that now. I don't know how to describe the story because I feel like I'm going to describe it. People are going to get a certain impression of it, and then they're going to come across a certain toothbrush scene. And I don't want to be responsible for introducing people to that. So now the adaptation of this is actually very well done. And I would regard this as a very good starting point for someone who wants to get into the Monogatari series, but it's kind of put off by the daunting amount of light novels and episodes. However, I do wish they did start this in chronological order. I wish they did Kizu Monogatari first because this art style and Kizu Monogatari's story would be phenomenal. But I'm hoping this collaboration continues just long enough that Kizu Monogatari gets adapted. So fingers crossed. So next up, I have the first three volumes of Mob Psycho 100 from, of course, the creator of One Punch Man. Now, Mob Psycho 100 is a series that I am only tangentially familiar with. Now, I have watched maybe the first two or three episodes of the anime, and it didn't entirely resonate with me. I, I thought it was a very well-animated show, and I thought the characters were funny. I liked the dynamic between Mob and Reagan, but for whatever reason at the time, it just wasn't clicking for me. Uh, but I bought these at MCM. I read through most of them that weekend but i gotta tell you guys i love this series like i read through the first three volumes in a row and i was like damn it i should have bought volume four and five and six and seven and eight and nine and ten however many volumes there are out uh i think a lot of people are probably going to be put off by the fact that the art isn't as polished as other manga although i think the anime does a very good job of adapting that style and maybe it works better in anime uh i think it definitely works better in manga now Another thing that might put people off with Mob Psycho 100 is the fact that it is definitely, unabashedly, psychic One Punch Man. And, you know what though? I think Mob Psycho 100 is a hell of a lot better than One Punch Man. And you know what? I'm going to get a lot of crap for that, but... What do the kids say? Haters gonna hate? Or something like that? So next up I've got Volumes 3 and 4 of Shuzo Oshimi's The Flowers of Evil. These are the complete editions, the omnibuses, and uh, this completes the series now. I own all of this. Uh, this is one of my first Shuzo Oshimi series that I ever read, and... It very much set a precedence for what my taste in manga is going to be. Now, I know a lot of people didn't like the Flowers of Evil anime because it was rotoscoped, but I think that style fits a hell of a lot more than traditional anime style would have. Um, and I know that there is a live-action version of Flowers of Evil coming out. I think it's a movie or a series. I don't remember off the top of my head. But uh, if you are able to, definitely go check that out because it has a theme song by one of my favorite bands, Regal Lily. Um... And I wish I could see it because it's going to be really cool. Now, in continuing the tradition of buying Shuzo Oshimi's manga, I picked up Volumes 1 and 2 of Happiness. This isn't a manga that I thought I was going to like, but I got to tell you, I absolutely love this. And I have to apologize to my podcast co-host Callum of On The Shelf for saying that I wasn't going to like it and that Flowers of Evil was better. I was wrong. This is video evidence of me saying that Happiness is better than Flowers of Evil, so... There you go. So next up are two manga that I'm going to preface by saying I don't remember if I've shown these off in a haul yet or not. I don't remember when I bought them, and I skimmed through my other hauls, and I couldn't find them, so I'm really hoping that I didn't, but that's Volume 6 and 7 of Dead Dead Demons, Dead 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 Destruction. Now, I've actually gone back and reread this going from Volumes 1 through 7, and the tonal shift from Volume 1 to Volume 7 is just unreal. This is definitely a slow burn series. If you were put off by how slow and uneventful the first two volumes were, definitely give it another try. And I think if you can experience Volumes 1 through 7 in a row, it'll give you a better understanding of the story and why it is so slow. Now, if you've been with my channel from the beginning, you know damn well what Dead Dead Demons Dead Dead Destruction is about. 
If you haven't watched my channel before, and shame on you if you haven't, just kidding, please subscribe to my channel. I'm not going to get too into what the story is about because I think you should really experience it for yourself. Suffice to say, this is definitely Inio Asano's magnum opus, and I hope it continues forever because I absolutely love it, even more so than Pun Pun. So next up in my slow, sluggish collecting journey is Volume 2 of Dorohedro. I had purchased Volume 1 when it came out, and I never read it up until two weeks ago. And now I want to own all of them. And that's just the way it goes. Uh, there's an anime adaptation coming out. Definitely check that out because it's done by MAPPA. And from the PVs that I've seen, it looks bloody fantastic. This is a wonderful manga. I don't know why I haven't read it sooner. And I'm going to rectify that by buying it all and reading it. So next up, I have a one-shot manga that's called That Miyoko Asagai Feeling by Shinichi Abe. Now, this is from Black Hook Press, which I believe is an independent publisher of different manga. Uh, manga that you wouldn't see from a traditional publisher, and a lot of that includes Gekika manga. Now, Gekika manga is a whole other beast that I'm going to get into in a completely separate video. Uh, you may have heard me talk about it when I picked up Cigarette Girl in a previous haul. It is essentially a movement of manga from the early 60s and 70s that arguably springboarded the seinen and jose demographics and targeted manga more towards adults and less towards only children. Now, uh, because I'm not 100% sure how this whole YouTube COPPA stuff works, I'm not going to get into what that Miyoko Asagaya feeling is about because it is definitely not for kids. And I should preface that this channel is not for kids either, despite the fact we're talking about comic books. Now, next up is not manga, it's actually two art books. The first one is a Masaki Yuasa art book that I got at MCM. Now, I absolutely love Masaki Yuasa, and some of you might be thinking, that name sounds familiar. Well, maybe you've heard of some of his anime. For example, Devilman Crybaby, Kaiba, Mind Game, Lou Over the Wall, Tatami Galaxy, I could go on. Uh, but this is a very cool insight into how he creates. It's got a lot of concept art for a lot of his anime. Uh, it's got concept art for, which I love the most, so I'm going to find that here. What stands out for me the most in this art book is the fact that there's a lot of, like, very crude sketches of early concept art for a lot of his most prominently well-known series. Uh, but what I love the most is some concept art for one of my favorite anime, Ping Pong. I don't know if that's showing up. See Pekko there. I don't even know how to recommend people to buy this. Like, I don't know the name of it. It's all in Japanese. Um, if you're able, I'll give you a look at the cover. If you can find it, definitely pick it up because it is bloody cool. Next up is one of two art books for the Tech on Concrete movie. Tech on Concrete is a manga, of course, you may know from other videos. One of my favorite manga by Taiyo Matsumoto. And the movie adaptation is actually one of my all-time favorite movies to begin with, not just anime. Um, there's a lot of really cool just sketches and art. And just to see the level of detail in the concept art alone, not just the movie. Like, look at some of this art, for example. This is just concept art. This is not even final art for backgrounds for the movie. This is just phenomenal. Um, there were two versions of this book, but unfortunately, uh, I only had the budget for one. And I don't know if I'm ever going to get the other one, so maybe that'll just be my next white whale. So next up are two digital volumes of manga that I can't show you because my tablet is dead and I didn't think ahead to charge it. It's volumes one and two of... Tokyo Revengers by Ken Wakui. Ken Wakui you may know for Shinjuku Swan, which is a manga that I really want them to release here, even if it's digital only, hint hint to whoever has the power to do that. Uh, and it also has two very good live action movies, which I don't believe are legally available, but if you are able to find them, definitely watch them. Now, I know in a previous video I have said that Brave Tuber Volume 1 was my favorite manga of 2019. Well, that is complete bullshit. Because never in my life would I have expected to enjoy a manga as much as I have enjoyed Tokyo Revengers. Now, the best way I can describe this manga, and if this doesn't entice you to pick it up, I don't know what will, is that it is a time travel delinquent seinen. That's all I can say. That's all I'm going to say because that's how someone described it to me. And I was like, wow, that's a combination of stuff that I like. Now, before I get into the final volume of this October-November 2019 manga haul, I want to preface this by saying thank you and giving a quick shout-out to fellow mecha fan Based Senpai. He knows that I've been after this particular volume that I'm going to show you in a second for years. And he found it on Reddit, and he immediately sent me a link. He's like, this is the, this is the volume you're looking for, isn't it? And uh, just like that, I bought it. And that is uh, my manga White Whale, Volume 3 of Boku no. This is a volume that is... I think it's the only volume of the series that's out of print... Every other volume is still in print, or not stupidly expensive. This, I was... I, I'm just at a loss of words, because I've never been able to find Boku no Volume 3 for less than £100. So now that I have this, I can actually invest in the other volumes, and yeah, I'm just, I'm excited. I, I honestly don't even want to open it, but you know what, I'm gonna anyway. And uh, yeah, once again, thank you to Base Senpai, mecha fans for life. So, that's it for this manga haul. What have you collected in October or November? Let me know in the comments below, hit me up on Twitter, 
or hit me up on Instagram. I don't use it a whole lot. I probably should. In either case, I want to hear what you guys have been buying. I want to hear what you guys have been reading because manga is awesome. I don't think any of us can dispute that. And don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, yada, yada, yada. You guys know the drill by now. Your support shows me that you guys want to see my videos. And having that support means that I get to make more videos. So it's kind of a win-win for both of us, I think. Of course, don't forget to support Legal Manga. You can do this by going to www.wherecaniremanga.com to get the lowdown on where you can read manga legally for free by a subscription or per volume. You can, of course, also go to your local book and comic shop or buy any manga off any online retailer. And until next time, folks, happy reading.